Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jared Hall, Entertainment Weekly Senior TV Editor. As part of EW's awardist coverage of this year's Emmys race, we have gathered several comics whose specials have made us laugh so, so much in this last year. And I am certainly one of those people who needed it. So please join me in welcoming Chelsea Handler, whose special Evolution debuted on Octo in October on HBO Max. Michelle Buteau's Welcome to Butopia debuted in September on Netflix. Beth Stelling and her special Girl Daddy debuted in August on HBO Max. And Jim Gaffigan's two-part special, The Pale Tourist, debuted in July on Amazon Prime Video. Hello and welcome to all of you. How are you? Great. Not bad. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm so happy all of you are here uh, because I've just enjoyed your specials so, so much. Uh, and, and it certainly got my friends and I who were in our own little pod through a lot of uh, weekend nights sitting around like looking for something to laugh about. So thank you to all of you for that, I must say, up top You here. are welcome. Whose was your favorite though? Oh, uh, it's someone who's not on this Zoom call actually, <laughs> but uh, no, I'm kidding. Great answer. <laughs> Um, but, you know, the interesting thing is, uh, interesting for better or worse, that all of your specials did debut in a very strange year. We had the pandemic. We had the aftermath of George Floyd's murder and all of the social unrest across the country. We had a very tense and stressful election season. People needed comedy and something to laugh about more than ever. So did, did each of you feel that in, in audience response, like perhaps hearing or seeing more on social media than you have in the past from, from other things you've done? I'll start with you, Chelsea. Yeah, I mean, it definitely felt like a time in our uh, in this world that we're living in where I wanted to do something. You know, I wanted to put something out there to kind of give relief and give joy and laughter and humanity and, you know, remind people of all the good things that we were not experiencing during this time. Um, so for me, my kind of motivation and impetus was rooted in that. Like, I really wanted to be able to contribute and put something out there during a year of, un, you know, of the unknown. And I think yours was the only one like filmed during the pandemic, right? For all the rest of you, you had already filmed your specials. Right, mine was March 7th film 2020 March 7th and I it wasn't really coronavirus wasn't a threat we didn't go ahead thinking that people might be in danger we did it not knowing what was about to happen the following week how irresponsible <laughs> just I mean just Beth unbelievable she was like I, I she was like I want to do my special for better I, yeah know, I'm a super spreader no I uh my, my special was, uh, it, it's, there's two parts that are on Amazon and two parts that are on YouTube, but I was about, it was supposed to have another part. I was in Bogota uh, and I was kind of like, you know, when it was all going down, I think around like March 9th. So it was, I had this strange special idea that I was in the middle of uh doing. So I couldn't even do one of the parts and I have all this material on Latin America that you know, nobody needs. Well, maybe, uh, Jim, maybe it's time to go back to Latin America. Everyone needs it. I'd yeah. like to. I'd like to. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, Chelsea, that you say you wanted to contribute and add joy because I felt almost the opposite where I did my special March 1st, 2020, and it debuted on Netflix September 29th, which was also the first day of the election. And I mean, sorry, not the election, um, the debate. And I thought, like, this is not a good time to share material. The, like we all like have to figure out how to vote, how to register, how to take care of each other, how to be safe. And I thought not the best timing while, you know, um, you know, the police are out here doing their business. There's protests happening. People don't even believe in science. And I was like, not the best time for some dick jokes, but <laughs> um, a lot of my friends did remind me, you know, that joy is an act of resistance. So, you know, like, just put your stuff out there. And I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, the internet told me that it was nice. Um, I've never heard this term joy watch something. I've only heard hate watch. And so when people are like, I need a palate cleanser and I joy watched your stuff. I'm like, oh, that's what it is. But there was a moment where I'm like, we don't need this. Nobody needs it right now. I definitely felt that. I mean, I felt that as the pandemic was really kicking. I just was like, what do I have to add to the world? And especially what you guys were all just speaking about. I was like, I think it's my turn to just 
I said, I said a lot. <laughs> I was like, I can't, I, I've said enough, I think. So I also felt like I could take a back seat for a minute, but yeah. I, I, yeah. So I definitely felt like I needed to, to shut up for a bit. And I also was just bummed out. Um, and I didn't really want a tour. I was happy to stay home. I needed a break. I think after you spent all those months leading up to your special touring and running your special, I personally was just ready to take a nap. Yeah. Well, what, what are all of your sets like right now? Like, are you embracing stuff about the pandemic as part of your jokes or do you feel like, eh, eh no, it's like, no thanks. Well, Jim's I mean, only doing Latin American material from now I'm, on. No, well, it's, you know, it's interesting because I, you know, I'm up here in Vancouver where they don't even have indoor dining. So there's mm -hmm. not really an opportunity to do shows. And I'm so lazy. If I'm not performing, I can't motivate to write. But I, I don't know what it's going to be like because I think that you know, we're a, di it's going to be a different society. I mean, it'll, I've talked to enough friends that are like, oh, it's totally normal. It's the same thing. But there is, you know, there's been, we're in the middle of a lot of changes. So I don't know what's going to be like, I'm not worried about, uh, uh, you know, like, it seems like people are still talking about political correctness. I'm talking about like, the, I wonder if it's going to go back to like, almost the combat comedy of the early nineties when I know that I'm, I look like I'm younger than everyone here, but when I started, it was, it was far more of when you went on stage, you assumed you were going to get heckled. And I, and my gut is that that's going to return. There's going to be uh, you know, there's going to be a Marjorie Taylor green in every audience. That's my expectation. At a safe distance, of course, at 33% yeah. capacity. You can have yeah. me from over there. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's such a wild question, right? Like you don't know until you get up there and do it. And I think people are so ready to be out. They just might be like falling over and cackling at the setup because I have friends who are so bougie that are just out vaccinated eating lunch next to a garbage truck because they're just happy to be out. So I'm really hoping that, you know, people will and just, I, again, Yeah, and I okay. also think like, at, this has served as such a big reminder of what we do contribute, you know, in our profession, like how, how powerful every performance is, like no matter what size your platform is, you are giving to people, you are like spreading hopefully joy and light and laughter, right? You're spreading all of this. And people are ready to soak, like soak it up. You know, I'm starting again this Thursday night. I start doing an hour, like nine nights in a row. I start an hour of new, brand new material where I'll just workshop it, you know, for an hour each night to figure out what my new, my new material is going to be. And obviously, you know, we're in a different place. It's like, you know, no one's, it's out of style to be making fun of any marginalized groups anymore. It's over. It's no more black, brown and black people. That's over. So like, you know, we need to focus on the people who are really um, at the center of, you know, all of our future problems, which are middle-aged straight, straight white men. Just kidding, Jim, not you. But, you know, <laughs> you, you I'm, know, not mad. I'm very you know, young. We're here to gang up on you, Jim. But Jim is a good boy. We all know that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and uh, so it's a, it's an interesting challenge that a lot of comics are talking about when I know you, we mentioned political correctness, not in this context, but I will bring it up. I like a, I like a challenge. I like to be have parameters yeah. put in place so I can be chaotic within them. So I think a, a lot of us are very excited about this kind of new phase of life. Yeah, people are going to be maniacal about wanting to have a good time right now. Now that like, yeah, you yeah. know, everything is going back to normal and people are getting a little too eager. So I'm just excited for that connection because I think we're all comedians, even though it's a self-absorbed profession and it's one person with a microphone, it really is about the connection. You want people to be laughing their asses off. You know, you want to make that happen. Mm -hmm. so I also think some people are wanting to like, as much as we get a lot of like stick to the jokes, you know, we don't want to hear your opinion. It's like in the age of podcasts, going to ask that. so yeah, many that people are looking for an yeah, so many people are looking for someone to follow and for talking points. And you know, I, earlier I said what I meant, which was I was, I was feeling what Michelle was feeling, like, oh, it's time for me to be quiet. But guess what? There's going to be much more unqualified people talking. So if I stop, I, I mean, mean, I'm not. Yeah. I, I, go ahead, Jim. Speaking of unqualified, 
you know, there is, uh, I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, I nerd out about this stuff. Uh, you know, all comedians do. We, you know, it's because uh, one point the, there is, I mean, obviously it's all point of view driven. So like people want to know Chelsea or Michelle's or Beth's view on things. It's all point of view driven. But like, I think what's interesting specifically uh, to, to just go to a smaller note I instinctively think, or my strategy is that I think people don't want to hear about the pandemic. I think people will be like, I mean, there's a reason, like, remember when the pandemic started and people were like, a hundred years ago, there was this pandemic. It's like, it wasn't like this big piece of history. Not that we haven't buried other pieces of history. It was like, once it happened, people were like, I never want to talk about that again. So my expectation is that there's going to come a time where people are like, you know, the pandemic jokes are going to be like um, Ross Perot or W impressions. It's like, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like people are not going to want to hear about it. There's going to be, there's going to be an enthusiasm, but I do think that my gut is that pandemic jokes will work for uh, a short time, but people eventually are like, it's I don't want to hear that. Yeah. That's I mean, especially if you're doing an hour. I mean, you have to yeah. like, fall off the elephant in the room and be like, I see your face. That is weird. Like the nose, like if I can see your nose, that's like see, that's like the new dick. You know what I mean? It's just like I want to see your dick and now I see your nose. You meet two women with your face. You know what I mean? Whoa, 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 cover up your mouth. I'm not ready for that. Yes. <laughs> Don't tell me your story about your cobbler recipe with your wet mask. <laughs> I, do, I think I think Chelsea brings up a really interesting point is that the whole restrictions. Or, or or boundaries or lines or whatever it, it, the uh, whether it be um, you know because it's you know every comedian gets these questions about like what's it like to do politic in this politically correct environment are you frightened of being canceled cut to That's two weeks from now I'm completely canceled <laughs> but, but like um, but the whole thing is is that like these restrictions like you know it, have always been there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they, there's always been uh, certain taboos and certain people can get away with pushing the boundaries on things. And some people can, I'm one of them, but like, so there's always been boundaries there and there will always be there. And that's, you know, like Liberty is this moving thing. That's why I'm running for Senator of Florida. In, uh... <laughs> wow, breaking news. All right. Emmys, this is so exciting. I want <laughs> Congrats, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. And Amazing. I'm getting married right now. No, oh kidding. my hey, gosh. Go. Wow. I just so want to still focus. In Florida and have Jim, Jim be the officiant. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to run for senator of every state. They're going to need our it's, votes down there. So I'll make gotta it. happen in one of them. Yeah. Um, Chelsea, you mentioned that you'll be getting back out doing an hour a week and, you know, workshopping stuff. So what, uh, what is one that you and, and for the rest of you as well, a joke you've been workshopping during quarantine? Well, speaking of COVID, I mean, I am going to start out with some COVID material when I start, but I agree with Jim. There's going to be a period of time. I mean, I had these Q health tests that I had once we were a couple months into COVID and I'm like, am I going to have sex again? Like, what? how long is this going to go on for? So once we kind of got the language and the parameters down, I had these Q health tests that I would have at my house that take 20 minutes. So if I met a guy, like, or somebody was setting me up, I'd have them come over to my backyard, give them the Q health, and then within that 20 minutes, deciding whether or not I could take it any further, that would decide if they were negative or positive. So if they annoyed me and said something stupid, like, I don't think masks work, I would come back with their test results and say, by the way, you're positive, you have COVID, please leave. <laughs> Pack your knives and go. <laughs> So it was a good way to get in and out of men, you know? No yeah. pun intended. Yeah. I mean, that's such a great question. I have no idea. I'm going to start doing stand up for the first time next Tuesday. Um, since the first time uh, since the special, March 1st, 2020. And um, I am just sort of like spaghetti fearing everything. I have no idea. This is the longest I've gone without stand up. But, uh, and this, I don't, not to, not to bring it down or whatever, but, uh, so many people have died and I'm so tired of just double clicking a hashtag of like rest in power that I'm just like, life is meant to be lived. And I don't, I don't really, I don't care what's going to work and what's not going to work. I just have to go out and do my thing. Like that's what's driving me to be honest. 
I've been doing um, shows outside in LA. I'm in no rush actually to get back on the road. I'm not someone who like feels, I'm not in the hour a year category. I'm in like, I'm going to make something special. And when it's done, I'll let you know and hope somebody wants <laughs> it. Um, so I'll just be on my, I'm going to be in the category of uh, not talking about the pandemic. I'm, if anything, I'll be like, hey, if you didn't do anything during it either, uh, I'm your friend. <laughs> um, so I'll be on my usual, like talking about my family. I hadn't seen them. I'm home right now in Ohio and I hadn't seen my family in over a year. Usually I see them quite often. So it'll be jokes about that. Like I'm very close with my sisters. I met them through my mom in the late 80s. Um, and I'll be on my usual like feminist bullshit that I'm constantly on, yes. which is, which is <laughs> with my buzzkill feminism, which is like uh, a new joke I've been working on is the only time men believe women is when they're lying about being 18. Ooh, come on, Gates. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Mm. Do we think that Gates had sex with an underage girl now? Is that news? Mm -hmm. uh, allegedly. Supposedly, oh. apparently. Oh, I'm uh, sick of this man. shit. Yeah. Oh. Jim, anything Please. you're workshopping? You know, I'm, I have, when this all clamped down, I was working on uh, these, this Latin American special, but I also had a bunch of material that is um, hopefully evergreen. So it'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. And some of, you know, to Beth's point, it's, you know, some of it's family stuff, some of it's just, you know, basic, uh, you know, my kind of thing of, uh, you know, exploring the character of someone who doesn't want to get out of bed and just wants to eat, you know, like <laughs> edgy stuff. <laughs> and, uh, but I, you know, there is something, I do think that things, uh, it's, Obviously, it's going to be looser at the beginning, but uh, this forced hiatus is, it'll be exciting to see what, how I change, you know, my, my performance, because, I mean, I love stand-up, and it's, it's, it's scary to go back to it, but it, it is also something that is this weird driving force, but I know that it's going to change, you know, it, you know, my stand-up changed, uh, you know, it's all, all comedians are, it's self-assignment, but this added element of, you know, the possibility of, uh, you know, and the reality of, of just everything in our society. I mean, it's like just the news in the last week is like, you know, heavy stuff. And yeah. so, um, uh, it, I don't know, it's, it's weird. It's, but that's the fear of, of the conflict is what's so exciting, right? Is that I gotta see what's gonna happen. I, I wanna to turn to all of your specials for a second and ask you the uh, like like the joke or moment that was hardest for you to to break and you know make work. Um well, for me, it was, you know, my, my special has a kind of really personal portion. Well, the whole thing is a narrative of my experience through therapy, realizing I was a huge bitch and trying to address that. Um, <laughs> Find uh, that empathy. I try to de-bitch myself, which is like an ongoing process. I have to wake up two hours earlier than everyone else. <laughs> I, I, you know, to me, it was, I have a, I have a moment 45 minutes into my special where there's five minutes of a really serious period of time where I'm talking about losing my brother at a very young age and the impact of that, my father's reaction and the impact of that and the abandonment and all of this emotional stuff. So for me, it was very difficult to live in that quiet when you're on stage as a comedian, like even though, you know, my agent kept saying, you've earned it. You've have 45 minutes of, you know, a laugh every 30 seconds. You can take five minutes to tell a story that is meaningful to you. And for me, it was very important to A, do this in the medium of stand up because I really wanted to contribute something that had depth, not just me telling jokes. I've done that before. I wanted to challenge myself in a way I hadn't before. And so I wanted this to be, you know, a, different and a departure from anything I had done. And it was just very hard to take that time knowing that you're making everyone in the audience stop, think, you know, uncomfortable, all of that, and sitting with it. And I would just want to gloss over it and be like, get to the next punchline, get to the next setup, get to the next joke. 
So for me, it was a huge lesson and just, you have to sit with that moment. Otherwise it loses its impact. Like you have to be present for the entire performance. So uh, yeah, that was very difficult for me to do and, you know, and get down. But it paid off very I, I well. I think it's such a beautiful thing that you said that because um, a lot of people don't say that or even give themselves permission to do that. And it's like, you're right. At the end of the day, we're all just trying to get through the day and we're already sharing so much. Why not share the other stuff that really matters? I think a lot of comedians are realizing that too, especially after watching Hannah Gatsby specialists. It's like, what happens when you actually dig deep and share? You can connect with people on different levels that they didn't even know that they could, you know, be open to in a stand-up show, which is great. I mean, you know, I was going through IVF for five years and I was trying to like do these like jokes or bits about like, nobody wants to know how the sausage is made and they don't, not even the doctor. They just want to make sure the check goes through. And so everyone felt really sad for me. And I'm like, don't feel sad for me. Like I'm a fighter. Like I'm getting through this. Like a lot of people are going through stuff on stage, but I, I put it away for a little bit. And I didn't realize that you can't, for me at least, really think about, wrap my mind around, write about, celebrate something till I'm on the other side of the mountain. And so when I welcome these twins um, via surrogacy, I was like, ah, I am so tired of trying to like be pregnant. And now I'm just like a tired mom. And I feel like I've earned this, this tired section of this um, tired mom section of the special. And so um, that was really, that was the hardest and the most special part for me because, you know, people don't really know much about surrogacy and they all have opinions. And uh, it's just like, well, what if somebody you like went through something that you don't understand? Can you be a little bit more open-minded? And so I feel like that's what had happened. Yeah, I like what you said about, you know, so much, so many times as comics, we have lived through dark things and in order to make it better for us, we're looking for a laugh to sort of have that like therapeutic release. And when people are just feeling bad for you, it feels even worse. So it's your job to find the laugh. And sometimes that can be difficult. Like you said, you stepped away from it for a bit. Um, and I did the same thing. This part of my special, I probably struggled with the most is like 10 minutes in. I have uh, I basically have rape material. And uh, I'm sure comics know that whenever you say that word, the audience immediately tightens and you have to find ways around it. So um, in my special, I figured out a way to make the audience say it first. And, uh, <laughs> and I just say, thanks so much for bringing it up. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's how I, I figured it out. But it was a lot of trial and error and a lot of making people comfortable. And they also have a threshold for how long they can hear about a certain subject like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you also brought up Hannah, which was formative, I think, in our comedy community, which actually plays a big role in my standup, I think. Um, I agree, it was influ influential. Um, Nanette and it definitely made me step back and think because my early days of stand-up as a 22 year old I was self-deprecating and she talks about how you know that can actually be more of a negative influence on yourself so it, it did cause me to step back but I'm also very aware and in tune with the community and I know how many people didn't call that not stand-up and that it was a woman show and they did everything in their power to um, make it so all the merits she was receiving weren't real stand-up so that really got under my skin and I'm someone who, <laughs> as much as I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I sometimes play inside baseball and I tell jokes about what it's like to actually be uh, a female comic and deal with other male comics. Jim? Jim, over to you. <laughs> Same. Wow. Well, first of all, Jim, I should clarify, as everyone knows, I, I am married to Hannah Gatsby, so I <laughs> there. Um, you know, it's, you know, what I would say is, uh, it's, you know, my, my concerns about my special seem so inconsequential, uh, <laughs> compared to what everyone's been talking about, but you Stick know, the, to there, comedy, Jim. there is something about, uh, you know, what I learned. So my wife almost died. Thanks for bringing it up everyone. But so doing that special, uh, no blade really kind of taught me that, uh, I can apply some of these tools to different things. And so what I wanted to do 
with Pale Tourist was give myself this unrealistic assignment. Uh, and I ended up, uh, you know, going to a place, whether it be, uh, you know, a geographic area like Asia or a country like Spain or Canada and really just do stand up just on that. And, you know, comedians, when we go to a certain town, you know, whether you're working at a club or you're hanging out in a town, you develop specific material. And so the challenge I had was, you know, like I have this special on Canada or I have a micro special on Florida, but the, the reality is, is that those, a lot of those jokes were tried maybe once. And so that was the scary thing because the control freak in me uh, had to forgo kind of the, the craftsmanship that every comedian wants to, you know, develop. So I have a special on Spain that I've probably performed, you know, half those jokes once. But that was kind of uh, the scary thing for me to kind of let go and just do this project. And also Hannah Gatsby loved it. <laughs> yeah. And what more That's want? so <laughs> scary, Jim, that you only did them once. I that is, yeah. it makes me feel better hearing that, you know, cause obviously you're a great comic and you've been doing it longer than me. So to be honest, it makes me feel but better. But I'm younger, nervous. I'm young. I'm <laughs> it's weird nervous. that you're younger, I know, and you <laughs> you do look better. I just, I, I wanna just piggyback on what Beth was saying about Hannah Gatsby and Nanette. And I just, because I felt the same way, you know, I was so moved by that special. She, that made me understand that I could do what I wanted to do and tell my story in that way, you know, in the medium of stand up. And I can't tell you how many men said to me, that's not stand up, that's a one woman show. No women said that, only men said that. and. It's so discount. It's like you can't marry emotion with humor. Humor is emotion. So marrying those two things together, having something that makes you laugh hysterically, and then having the power to twist it and make someone feel deeply, should totally be on display anytime anyone fucking feels like it. And definitely in the medium of stand up. And it is a very sexist argument to be like, well, why? Because she told a real story. That's not stand up. She's standing up telling the story. That's stand up. And we're laughing. Yeah. So, well, we were laughing. Thanks. Well, yeah, exactly. I think, I you know, I, and Jim, yeah. Laughing. And Jim as well. Uh, so put laughed. that in the record. On the record, Jim was laughing. Look, I think, you know, uh, you know, I, the, the thing about the whole, it's so funny because like Nanette was not even the most recent one of hers is that. Mm -hmm. All these things, and the reason comedians feel so passionate about this, and it's not just because the, there might be sexism behind it, it's because this stand-up is this fluid thing. There's no rules. I mean, you know, like 40 years ago, there were rules that were dismantled by Carlin. And before that, there was these Borscht Belt comedians that didn't even write their own jokes. And so it's like, it's, it's ever-changing. And... I, I believe this even dovetails into the politically correct thing. It's moving, you know, like people that are saying, stop, no, this is the rule. We don't have time for them because it's, it's always gonna keep moving. It's like, I have a 16 year old that like educates me on so many things mm -hmm. because society is moving. It's yeah. just, you know, like, so like as brilliant as, uh, you know, uh, you know, like, uh, um, you know, America's appetite or the world's appetite for comedy, whether it has a dose of sincerity, that interest is going to change. So in five years, many specials might necessitate a, a, a confessional, a deep seated moment for it to have uh, authenticity for that moment. So it's always changing. I also but, think too, oh, sorry, what are you going to say? No, go ahead, please. I was just thinking, you know, look, we're, this is rare, right? Normally coming up, I was often the, you know, female comic on, on the show, you know, and whether we liked it or now we're here, look at us three ganging up on one. It's <laughs> times have really changed, but um, you know, there is something to be said about that uh, in the sense that whether we liked it or not, we were like the spokesperson for our gender. Whereas male comics have always been granted individuality on stage and therefore are less careful with their material in some ways or their word choice. Where I'm over here, like before my special, truly picking out the likes and changing them to said. And because I will be judged more harshly for it. 
so I think I am happy that that things are changing and shifting, um, but we are held to somewhat of a different standard um, when it comes to what we're talking about. And I, I mean, I, I, it's there is absolutely progress, but you know, there's still plenty of of comments um, about female yeah, comments. Always, and it won't even happen in our lifetime. But you know, um, when people ask me, oh, it, you know. Who do you really want to work with? What's the one person you want to work with? I'm like, I don't care. I will work with anyone who is talented and hasn't made to someone. Like I'm here for it. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I, I stand by what I say. I stand by what I say. And so I'm proud of it. And so years from now, when my kids look at it and be like, wow, look at my mom with this well-crafted dick joke. It's just like, yes. Mm -hmm. You can be body positive, sex positive, and a mother, and all that stuff. You know what I mean? You could be more than one thing at the same time. It's just like move on. You know, Absolutely. I like like what Jim was saying. It's like we make the rules. It's up to us. Do what you want. Well, and, and that's a, for me a, a perfect segue into this next question because I are you I, a I'm mall cop? Because you got segues. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> um, but I'm wondering for each of you because you're saying there there are no rules, and and you know so many people 40 years ago or so, whatever, were you know kind of breaking boundaries, pushing the envelope. What when did each of you identify your own personal brand of comedy, and was it something that happened pretty quickly for each of you, or was there an evolution? I don't think I, mean, I, yeah. I think other people branded me. I, I think yeah. other people still put me in a box. You know? I truly needed to like when people say, what do you talk about? Or what's your thing? What's your shtick? I, I needed someone else to tell me. I had no yeah. clue. Yeah. That's, that's like you're about me on like a dating app when they first came out in 2005, when you had to write like a whole, it's just like, is this a LinkedIn job I'm applying for? Or is this just like, I want to go out on a date to a nice restaurant? When people ask you questions, like what's your stand up about? It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, think, I think I think what what you know that that question is 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 intended to provide is that essentially from my experience that like stand up has to be authentic so and that authenticity some people step right into their authentic point of view I was trying to be like date Natal I was trying to be I was hopping around. I used to smoke on stage. It's like I tried all no. these things. Oh, yeah. Wow. And then I was just like, and that's, you know, you see that even even in funny people when they first start, you'll see them kind of sound like their favorite comic a little bit. And so oh. it's finding that authenticity. I don't know if it takes 10,000 hours, but it's, I think it's about the authenticity. So when people say, what's your comedy like? I think that's kind of like a remnant of, you know, uh, or like something borrowed from like music is like, is it, are you country or are you kind of like, are you modern pop or, you know, it doesn't yeah. apply to I think we're comedians. all rolling our eyes because it just feels yeah. so small minded. It's just like, yeah. you know, pe I don't really feel like people are that interested if they say what's your comedy like. It's like, oh, you don't have a boyfriend, why? You have a boyfriend when yeah. you need to get married. It's like, don't worry about the next steps. Be in the moment with right. me. This is what we're sharing. But it's so and interesting I think, what I yeah, feel sometimes. Yeah. But Jim brought up music, which is so crazy, right? Because people can say, that's not funny, or I didn't like it, or she's not this, or he's he's not funny. It's like, well, you don't like all bands and you don't like all styles of music. So I, that about, just to me leads to, to that, like- people. What about Nickelback though? <laughs> Off the table, do not talk about them. <laughs> Did they ever get the nickel back? <laughs> Look at this photograph. I've, okay. I don't know. I did a whole thing about how like shitting on Nickelback is unnecessary. But that's all right. I'm sorry. I just, Can someone let Avril Lavigne into the meeting? <laughs> I, I hate when I upset Jim. I don't want to upset Well, you know, him. it's like I want to bring light. And when we all are here, we should focus on bringing light. That's right. I like We're here that. for it. I like that. Okay, so then let me segue into this next question here perfectly. Um, I, and, and Michelle, you even kind of uh, briefly touched on this, but from your specials, then what is a joke that you were like really proud of and you were like, hell yeah, that one like really stick the landing, stuck the landing. Oh, don't ask me. <laughs> I speak English. Public school in Jersey, do not ask me. 
Uh, <laughs> wait, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? You said what the say that part like again. A, 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 joke, a joke from your special that you are really proud of that like really stuck the landing. Mm. Uh, I think who wants to go first? You know, oh, I, I will go first just because I want to say it before I forget because <laughs> I've been sleeping this whole time. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, a lot of, uh, when I told the producers that I, you know, this is the part of this joke in the show where I do improv, they're like, oh, and I'm like, yes, I'm going to do improv. I love connecting with the audience. I am a real person. I, you know, like this is the moment. And they're like, but is it a waste of time? I was like, I don't know who you work with, but I'm not that bitch. And so there is this part of the show where a lot of my single friends, I talk, my, I talk about my single friends who are just like, I would love love too. And I'm like, be open. Like everyone's got a list, like they're going to fresh direct. And it's just like, you know, when I tell people you have a type, but you are also somebody else's type, I see everybody get it. And I'm like, what in the big titty freckle face, Brene Brown in my cervix. So, you know, better than a laugh. I'm like, oh, if I can like just have somebody remember something um, the next time you know, they go out in the world and try and date or whatever it is. I'm like, then that's the cat's meow. That's the chef's kiss. That's whatever follows those things. Love it. Thanks. Bye. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess what I joke guess. I was, right, go oh, go Jim, go, go Jim. No, no, you go. Please. <laughs> White men first, Jim. Okay. All right. Go. Go ahead. No, you go. Jim, you. Okay, I'll go. No. My favorite joke uh, from my special. Okay, the thing, I guess, what I was probably most proud of was uh, I sort of talk about how the stigma of abortion is fully on women, and I think that's bonkers. And I do an analogy that compares abortion to leftovers. So watch the special to find mm -hmm. out. The show or the food? Leftovers. The food and watch the special at the same time <laughs> exactly um i yeah. guess that i would say uh you know when i told when i figured out what i wanted to do for pale tourists and i was telling my manager and agent that i wanted to do these specials about <laughs> different places in the world they were like uh uh like that's a real bad idea and mm -hmm. no one's going to want to watch that outside of those areas. And uh, but so I, I think that the biggest joy is because I am up here in Canada, there has been a lot of Canadians that have liked that. And so like different, you know, like I did a special on Asia and there's been a lot of people that have reached out and, you know, whether they're uh, you know, they live there or they visited there. It's it's kind of captured, uh, you know, a unique take on different things. You know, like I, it was just kind of validating, I guess. I love that. Chelsea, you have one? I mean, I think, I mean, I don't have a favorite joke. I mean, I'm proud of, I'm most proud of being able to like weave, you know, social and political justice and racial issues through my stand up from the lens of a white privileged woman. Like I like to, you know, there's a line where I say the world is only getting browner and gayer. So you better hop up on board or you're gonna miss the fucking bus. You know, so I think I'm proud of being able to make sure that I'm not up there telling jokes only for my benefit, not trying to like patronize or condescend to people, but to say, hey, this is my viewpoint. It has changed a lot. Like this is the road I'm on and this is what I've learned. Come with me because we all need to make a lot of changes. You know, and you should feel like shit too for not knowing more sooner, but that's okay. Just find out more now. And that's kind of like a through line through everything that, you know, through my stand up too. It's like that. And thank um, you for I, that. You know what I mean? A lot of yeah. comedians are like, I'm not political. I'm not the, and like, oh my God, Jim, when you got on Twitter and you were just like angry, tired dad when Trump was everything. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. That you might be pissing off some, um, followers but also this is the time to you know you right, we all right. need we all need to be brad pitt in 12 years a slave we all need an ally we all have to stand up and say this is not right and if you can weave it with jokes even better so yeah. thank you for that oh thank sure you. sure sure 
Um, I, I, like I don't the know Hannah if Gatsby of, of the election. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if any of you have uh, seen yet the, uh, it's on HBO Max, the new comedy Hacks, starring Gene Smart, who plays a stand-up comic. Uh, and in the premiere, there's a moment when uh, the, the young writer who she ends up um, working with, she tells her about getting canceled and this joke that she tweeted. And she says, I don't know, it just, I guess it crossed a line. And Gene said, no, no, it, it just wasn't funny. There is no line. It just wasn't funny. Do each of you agree? or disagree that there is no line? I think that applies to certain people. You know what I mean? Mm, I think certain sure. people get away with a lot more than other people do. Um, I speak from experience. I know I've gotten away with a lot of things. Um, and I think it, you know, it, like I've heard some jokes from some, you know, people that I'm like, holy fuck, how did they get away with saying that? But that's a person that people aren't gonna go after, you know? Yeah. Or, or you have, you know, you can't get canceled if your fans are pieces of shit. And there's that. Oh, put that on a magnet. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're. But <laughs> speaking magnet. of speaking of magnets, I feel like your your words are your words are a magnet. What you say, what you what comes out of your mouth is going to attract a certain crowd. So their their tolerance for whatever you're going to say is going to be different. And uh, yeah, to me, it matters absolutely. And I also think people can get away with things as long as they're not touched by it. So as soon as something has happened to them that will forever change their perspective, they'll be able to talk about it however, however they want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think there's jokes that, uh, you know, like, it, it, you know, not to get all nerdy here, but like, I think that any topic can be funny. And like, you know, obviously comedians, overall are against censorship but there is just like being stupid <laughs> do you know what yeah. i mean and yeah. so like there's you, you know like it's 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 like a bad comparison but like in a way like comedians being against censorship are kind of like libertarians you know like there should be no government it's an interesting idea but it's not practical so i think that mm -hmm. there is something about you know like yeah you can do jokes on any topic and and to chelsea's point if you're the right person and you can deliver them that's good but i i'm also kind of i you know i believe that there's there's a soft hammer you can make the same point mm -hmm. without alienating everyone if a word is toxic you don't have to say the word if you're trying to make a point that hopefully is bringing light and there's also, you know, the idea that you can, uh, you know, it's evolving. You know what I mean? So like, you know, I, you know, I've been around long enough where there was this sick period. I'm not making this up. Maybe Chelsea might know this. There was a time when like in New York City where comedians would try and weave in the N word into a joke. It was like, a, you know, like, and it was like, this fleeting kind of moment so like there are these moments where for positive or for bad that truth that that's mentioned in that show exists but like you would never see that now right you know and I mean? you know what's so interesting is that listening to all you guys 100 percent agree but when um mr hall asked the question in my mind i thought of um well, I heard Chris Rock say one time, you can make any, you can talk about anything as long as it's funny. And so for me, right now, answering that question in my mind, I went to like, you know, abortion, suicide, um, you know, rape, cancer. That's where I went, where I was just like, oh, if you're going through something, you know, figure it out, how you feel, stuff like beginning, middle, end and make it funny. But 100% agree with you guys too. But I just thought that that was interesting where you guys are like, don't say toxic shit. Shit, it's just like, no one told you? Yeah, I mean, I loved what you guys were saying about, yeah, or I think it was Jim, it was like, bring light. You know, like, yeah. what is it in you that, is it that you don't live at home anymore and you can't piss off mom at dinner so you need to piss off a bunch of people in a crowd? Like, why, why are you doing what you're doing in my opinion sometimes? like. Yeah. If it is upsetting people, is that not more about you and what you're looking for and what you need? Like, that's just my opinion on it. Like, Some you can't piss off mommy anymore, so you got to piss off mommies in the crowd. 
Yeah. Some people are just like walking road rage and I'm like, Ooh, you're going to age me. Bye. <laughs> and by the way, there's, I mean, that being said there and everyone here, I don't even have to ask them because there are jokes that are, you know, vetted by uh, society's norms and morals and, and, uh, and they're still going to upset people. Do you know what I mean? Like, so like, People might think, oh, Jim Gaffigan, so vanilla. No, there's people that are furious about jokes about lobster. Do you know what I mean? So like mm -hmm. independent of all this stuff we're oh, talking about. Is that, oh my, I had a joke about a pet peeve yeah. about adults bringing a pillow on a plane. I'm like, <laughs> if, if you're doing that, stay the fuck home. Do you know what I mean? Like if you need a yeah. pillow, and you're 45, you need a blanket. <laughs> and then I would like attack me in all these like disorders about adults that need shit. I was like, I oh my God. I the strap off for my daughter because I forgot the name for a baby Bjorn. And I'm like, get me the strap off for our daughter. No one said anything about that. Tired moms around the world were like, I get it. What yeah. is the power called in the tire? What the yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, if you've ever done anything with like NPR, I've had I've had old people come after me for being for saying like a joke about my mom. <laughs> They're like, "That's ageist." I'm just sort of like, yeah, yeah, so "Okay." Down. I'm just like, "You were not offended over police brutality, but we want to talk about a pillow." <laughs> Unfollow, delete. Unfollow, mm -hmm. delete. <laughs> Um, look, does, I, does that I, bring us to your next question? It does, and it brings me no. It's perfect segue. No, uh, but it does bring me to uh, my last question. I could, I could seriously, I have so many questions here. Uh, I could talk to all of you all day. But the last question I will ask is: Do you ever probably think back, but look back at some of your very early gigs or specials, uh, and and are there like any cringe moments, or you do it? Do you do it specifically to like think about? how you've grown, what you've learned all along the way. Oh, oh yeah. I'm not a fan of, of, of watching myself on t oh, television yeah. or of past work. It would probably be a good exercise, but I like to focus on the fact, no, I mean, I just can't see myself sitting down and doing that. You know, I think we all have gone through an evolution of sorts. You know what I mean? As, as a comic, you are connected to audience, you know, you're out there, so you are evolving. And you know, and the more you learn, the more you change, the more you grow, the different kind of approach you have to things. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't spend a lot of time looking at my old work just because I find the sound of my voice incredibly irritating. <laughs> <laughs> my old specials just are the only way that I can sleep. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't often go back. It is really cringy for me to look at early work. I, I have absolutely gone back and watched things almost for like, I'm sort of, I call myself like a type A comic. I am very organized and stuff. So I just want to know how many times, not how many times I've told a joke total, but like if I'm saying a joke or a line in a special, I want to make sure I get rid of it. So I have definitely gone back and watched. It is cringe. I feel like over the years, uh, I got, I've gotten closer and closer to my personality and I hope to continue to change and uh, be malleable in that way because, um, but yeah, I would say most happy with my, my last special, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm still fine with it, but I don't know, it might take a watch for me to hate it. <laughs> Michelle? I, I, you know, watching myself do stand up is like watching myself take a shit in one of those mirrors in a very <laughs> expensive hotel. It's like, why is that mirror right across from the toilet? It's like, why did you do that? That's disgusting. <laughs> I don't care if you're like JLo or Justin Bieber, no one needs to see that. So to answer you, what was the question? The point is. <laughs> Can you watch your old stuff? Does it make no, you cringe? It does, it does, it does. <laughs> but I, you know, for editing purposes, absolutely. You know, you have to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself and be like, do more cutaways to the audience laughing, even though they weren't laughing at that bit. Just <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, in general, no, I did have a, when I had a, a party one time in 2002, because I started in 2001, one of the comedians came over with a VHS tape and he's like, can we put it in and watch myself? I was like, absolutely not. And unfollow me on, on MySpace. We're done. Like, I, I <laughs> Out can't. of the top friends. Yes. Jim. Jim. Okay, yes. Jim. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. What I would say is, uh, <laughs> You know, like we talk about like as corny as it sounds, like the whole like bringing light, you know, or or trying to be positive or not being 
you know, cons you know, like, look, it's, you know, comedians love to give each other shit. It's like, we love to put each other down in a very affectionate way. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's absurd, right? <laughs> but like, there is something about in my stand up when I look back on things like I, you know, way back, it's like, there might have been stuff that is, uh, you know, not, you know, it's it's not that I can't, you know, I can't see my voice and or anything like that. But it's also like, oh, that was kind of lazy. That was kind of like, that was, uh, you know, like, I, I don't want to ever be associated with like, doing something mean. That's not to say that I'm not a mean person occasionally, but like my stand up, when I see something where it's like, I used to have these jokes a long time ago about models that was really kind of mean. And it, like when I came to the realization, like people are just, you know, I'm just us and them, you know, it's like, there's something about that that is just very uh, crude. It's like, you know, people, res uh, humans respond to like lust and hatred and, and stuff like that. So I was just kind of playing on uh, a lazy thing, but it wasn't in a special, I don't think. That's the only mistake I've ever made in my life. <laughs> the one and only. Uh, well, listen, all four of you, I, I truly cannot thank you uh, enough for, for being our guest here today. Uh, so I want to thank Chelsea Handler, Michelle Buteau, Beth Stelling, and Jim Gaffigan. And thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, and you can check out all of their specials. They're all streaming. So uh, be sure to do that because they are all fantastic. Uh, and we'll have a lot more Wordus coverage online at EW.com and more to come this season. So stay tuned. <laughs>